Because here's what I want you to imagine. 90%, I believe 90% of the world should not be suffering. And I believe 90% of us should be healthy. 90% of us should be engaged in loving relationships. And 90% of us should be engaged in careers that turn us on. Think about, think about living in a world where 90% of the population have bodies that are vibrant, powerful, healthy, and engaged. Think about living in a world where 90% of us are engaged in loving, supportive, uplifting relationships. And think about living in a world where we are engaged in careers that turn us on, feed, and fulfill us. This is where we should be living. Now, empirically and observationally, I would say that less than 10% of the population gets this. Look around you. We have a 60% obesity rate. We have a 50% divorce rate, and we have a greater than 50% business failure rate. And so why aren't we living in our power? And we're, living in, we're not living in our power because we haven't connected to the truth inherent in our breath. And the number one thing I want you to focus on and take out of today's training is it's about release. It's about releasing regret and expectations. So we got a couple comments. Great. What do we got? Um, we have so so this naturally naturally then leads to the best use of now, and the dojo lessons videos help with that. And uh, Paula agrees, and Paula also says it's very timely uh, for part of her healing process right now to focus on this. You know, guys, I, was, I want to make sure that the investment you've made in your training is the best investment you've ever made. And, and I wake up every day, literally, if I'm not working with a client, I'm thinking about these things, and I'm researching, and I'm testing these things. And the truth is, I've, I spend way too much time suffering. I spend way too much time suffering. And when I'm suffering, I'm not serving. Think about that. When I'm suffering, I'm not doing my job. I'm not taking care of you guys. I'm not empowering. I'm not engaging with it, and I'm not uplifting. And so I just really, why do I suffer? Well, I'm holding on to something. I'm holding on to the fact that you know, I was thinking about, I was thinking about my first marriage. We were together for 16 years and it was really this storybook wedding. And I was 26 and she was 24. And we had all of these dreams and all of these hopes. And at the age of 42 years old, she drank herself to death. And, and I don't even have to tell you everything that you might imagine that transpired as I watched this woman I love disappear. And there was a lot of very real suffering that was a part of that. But that isn't happening to me now. That isn't happening to me today. And if I get stuck in my regret, and if I pour my energy into why she didn't meet my expectations, how can I marry someone that would do that? How can I marry someone that would not honor herself? And so I'm just doing this. I'm hopping from here to here, and I'm giving up now. And I'm not willing to do that. I'm not willing to not be of service to you guys, and I'm not willing to not be in my power. And, you know, there's all these complex lessons, and there's the 12 steps and the seven habits and all this stuff. And what I really recognize is it's just breathing. I breathe in, and we call this source. Every single day, stop, go inside, listen, make it a habit. Listen, find out what's true for you. Am I in my joy? Am I on my path? 
then I release. Let go, forgive, it's gone, it's in the past. Then I come in here and I serve. And by service, this is my outward acts in the world. I'm loving, I'm supporting, I'm learning, I'm engaging, and then I release again. And imagine living in a world where I spent my time sourcing, releasing, serving, releasing. Source, release. This is going to keep me right here. It's going to keep me in my center. It's going to keep me in my power. And when, I, and, and when it's time for me to suffer, here's what's tragic. Who's going to lose someone they love? We all are. All of us are. And when that happens, I want to be present. But it's not happening now. It's not happening to me today. 90% of us are not being suffocated. We're not starving, we're not freezing, we're not losing a loved one. So why are we living in regret and why are we putting expectations of something that isn't happening? And so that's really just what I wanted to connect with you guys on today. The beauty of your breath and the power of this simple internal sourcing, recognizing that the truth and the answers you need are right here, release. Serve those ideas, act on those ideas, act on them right now, then release. So in my breath, the simple act of source, release, serve, release, source, release, serve, release. Think about how that will keep you centered and think about how that will keep you in now. So and we'll so, yeah. Oh, um... There's been some questions. Can you just address um, for everybody who is participating in the uh, in the mastery life mastery course about the training? Um, the question is: Is it a good idea to part, uh, set a specific time every day to to listen to the lessons? And also, um, <coughs> they're feeling the best way to get more out of it is to you know set up some more time to engage fully like this as well. So um, to answer, is, is there our best training time? The answer is absolutely. And if you look at our elemental model, the earth element is down here, water, fire, and wind. And this is an energetic flow. And the void is right here. This is your heart. This is where we source. The best time, well, okay, this is gonna, I'm going to contradict myself. This compass is meant to make sure you never get lost. So if you and I are on an, on an adventure in nature, the first thing we do is we've selected a destination. We're going to Yosemite. We have a map. So I've got my destination. I've got my map. I've got my compass. As we're moving in nature, we're going to stop all the time. Every half hour, every hour, I take out my map. I take out my compass. And I source, are we lost? Am I on, can I identify exactly where I am? Am I on my path? So one of the things that's essential in this training is you should be stopping all the time. And it doesn't, you know, before you go into a meeting, before you go home, uh, when you, before you start your day, stop. My longest sourcing session is in the morning before I get out of bed, before I put my feet on the earth. I lay there, and this is where I really imagine, I really connect with how today can best be served, how I can be in my greatest joy, what, what will honor my truth the most. And I want you to think about this. As the day progresses, <clears throat> the earth is the early morning. Sunrise is right when the dew starts to form. Then there's the heat of the day. And then there are the afternoon winds. When you make your training times, when you schedule them first thing in the morning, you will always be more successful than when you schedule them late in the day. Why? Because this is the nature of energy. 
in the morning, I'm totally in control of my calendar. Nothing's happened yet. Nothing's thrown my day out of order yet. As I progress through the day, I start losing control of my calendar. The wind element becomes much more dominant. And when you're attached to and aligned with these energies, you listen. So it's three o'clock in the afternoon and my little girl gets sick. That's my number one priority. That takes precedent over me going into the dojo. That takes precedent over me training. So to give you two answers, number one, yes, dedicate 20 minutes in the morning, 30 minutes to grounding, connecting, training. This is where you're going to make sure that today you are now. And if you, if you delay this step, then what's going to happen is, and statistically, people who go to the gym in the morning have a much higher success rate than people who go in the evening. Why? It's an elemental process. Before your kids get up, before your day starts, before the world is awake, you have total control of your calendar. As your day progresses energetically, you lose more and more of that. So I hope that answers your guys' question. Um, yes, I do my sourcing first thing in the morning. So where I lay my roadmap out for the day. But then I'm always stopping. I'm stopping and sourcing and checking in. Am I lost? Because I get lost all the time. I get bumped into regret. I get bumped into expectations on other people. And it's only when I stop and pull my compass out that I find my way back into now and into this power. So that was a great question. Does anyone else have one? Yes. And this is very cool, by the way. <laughs> so Paula says uh, she's going to be up for uh, boot camp at 6 a.m. and Bill at 7.30 a.m.